Inside Inclusion. My name is Ella. I am a U.S. Youth Ambassador from New York. I'm, I am a freshman from SUNY Rockport. I am studying Child Inclusion Education. Thank you for joining us. Hi Ella. Hi Lori. My name is Courtney Langelotti and I'm also a U.S. Youth Ambassador from New York. I am also a freshman at SUNY Rockport for Elementary Inclusive Education and you'll get to know a little about, more about me as we talk. We're excited to have a chance to talk with our partners from Hip Hop Public Health. Hi, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, my name is Lori Rose Benson. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of Hip Hop Public Health. Also based in New York, that's our home, but we are a nonprofit organization that works with young people, with families, with schools, with lots of organizations to inspire healthy behaviors using music and multimedia, using the power of music, art, and science to really help everyone achieve health and wellness. So I'm thrilled to be part of this very important conversation and thank you for having us. Wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental health outcomes. So that instead of just surviving, we're thriving. Let's go and jump into learning and how we can apply our overall health lifestyle. Courtney, explain the wellness inclusion having a source of health habit what are some of your health habits you have to help you feel mental and physical strength and how did you build this healthy habit so one way that i well one healthy habit i have is that i try to stretch or go for a walk or get some sort of little minor physical activity into my day every day um something that is a fun thing that i do is i will try i'm i babysit and i teach dance so i try to help um the youth as well with younger kids i try to bring them into it go on a walk with them do some exercising with them just to make sure that they're there and they're kind of holding me accountable as well, um, which leads into how I built these healthy habits. I had friends that would hold me accountable and tell me, you need to do this, text me, don't forget to stretch tonight, little things like that, subtle reminders to have friends that were holding me accountable for the healthy habits that they wanted to see me do as well. You know, if it's okay, I would love to also answer that question. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, first of all, Courtney, um, what, what you said, um, really connects with me deeply because I think it's so important to have other people in your life that you can motivate and that can motivate you, right? So any kind of habit um, we're most likely to keep doing if we have encouragement. And that's kind of like the power of a buddy, the power of a friend. So that that's wonderful. Um, and that helps keep each other accountable, as you said. For me, sometimes, I've been spending a little too much time behind my computer. I've been trying to make sure I add more physical activity into the day. So whether it's a stretch like you like to do, Courtney, whether it's a yoga pose, um, something like that, just adding those little bursts of energy throughout the day kind of helps me sneak in activity, especially on days when I feel like I just don't have the time to do it. So. Absolutely. I'll have to start trying that one. <laughs> I've learned that life can throw some curveballs and unexpected situations and feelings may arise. Why do you think it is important to maintain a healthy lifestyle even when times are tough? It's important to stick to a health, a habit so you do not fall out of your habit and it makes it hard to start again yeah you know i i really agree with what ella said and i think especially all through 2020 right we're in a new year now having a routine to keep us focused when so many other things are out of our control 
has been really helpful. Um, like you might have just seen me, I now I keep water with me uh, all the time because sometimes I forget to drink. Oh, cheers! <laughs> forget to drink water, and so that habit of like starting my day pouring a glass of water, making sure I keep it filled wherever I am, especially if I'm, you know, on the computer a little too much, you know, the more you can keep your own wellness routines that can really help you through some tough times. That's all of it, cause opportunities for athletes with interact disabilities to play on the same team and field as partners without disabilities. As a result, people around the country are able to stay active. What is your favorite memory as a athlete? How does it make you feel? I obviously played uh, unified sports throughout my high school career. And there were a lot of different um, favorite memories. It's really hard to pick one, but I think an overall memory that I really appreciated as an athlete and being on a team um, that was including everyone was seeing the growth within my teammates and that our growths were totally different and on a total different scale, if you were going to measure them, no one cared about what your step, next step you were taking was. They were caring that you took the next step. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important in all athletics and all stages of life, that it doesn't matter how fast forward you're moving or how fast everyone else around you is moving. The fact that you're moving forward and continuing to better yourself in whatever way that may be, I think that's really important. And unified sports really um, created that sense of it didn't matter how fast you're moving as long as you're moving forward. Social media is a big part of our lives, especially right now. How do you make sure you absorb healthy content online? And why is it so important to do so? I look at MMO pictures, look, um, and look at my friends' feed and talk to my friends. So, Ella, when you say animal pictures, I'm kind of a cat person. What kind of animal person are you? Dog. Uh, I, yeah. We're both dog girls. Dog. I, I like dogs too. I like dogs. I, I'm like an all animal person, but I, I, I sh my two cats here, don't tell them that I also <laughs> like dogs. Anyway, you know, um, you know, for me, when it comes to social media, I actually try to um, put up things that are really more positive or about something exciting I learned at work or from friends or a colleague or sometimes cute cat pictures. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I try to keep it positive because people think that uh, you could delete something, but I don't know. I don't think you really can ever really delete something. So I think it's always important to think twice mm -hmm. about um, what you put up there in, in addition to the types of things that you consume that um, keep you feeling a little bit more positive. Yeah, and I'm just gonna add in on this because like Lori said, I found myself at a point where I had to go through and unfollow certain people because I was seeing all these perfect things and I was like, wow, that looks really nice and blah, blah, blah. Why isn't that, why isn't that how I'm feeling when I'm locked mm -hmm. in my room? Why are you having a great time? And then <laughs> two, I realized that I don't know them well enough to know their lives and see the not so good moments that they're not sharing. So I've tried to make my social media, the people, the the media I consume is from my friends and family, the people that I know because I know their lives and I'm not just seeing the good of it. I'm also there for the bad. So sorry, just had to add in. It is important to pay attention to how you are feeling. Sometimes you can be doing something fun. Other times it can also be doing something for business. What does your self care look like? For me, I, um, I'm a pretty social person. And so, especially throughout the pandemic where, you know, it was, it's been important to to stay home and be socially distant and, and really only go out when you really need to. Um, I really missed seeing my friends. And um, 
you know, seeing people through Zoom or other computer platforms um, isn't exactly the same thing, but um, it is a way to stay connected, right? So I, I've been trying to um, make sure that I reach out to the people that I, I really miss um, to um, to make me feel better. It's kind of like a hug when I get to talk to some of my favorite people. Um, and, and also, you know, um, just being able to make sure I am being nice to myself, you know, not putting too much pressure because sometimes uh, if you're working at home, you know, or doing schoolwork from home, it feels like the day never ends mm -hmm. because there isn't like a normal start or a normal ending. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, really be nice to myself and not work too much, still work hard, but not work too much. I totally agree. I had the same issue where it was just, school time blended right into at home time because who knew what time it was um mm -hmm. so yeah i totally agree but um a little self care self care thing i like to do is just i'm a very social person as well but when i've had too much social or too much screens i just need to like be alone um so i like to just shut off all of my devices and just like be done for the night and just watch something to totally distract me and get in bed and just relax. Ella, was, is there anything that you want to share about, um, you know, what self-care looks like for you? I listen to music or oh, hang out with my dog. Amazing. Speaking of music, maybe we could talk a little bit about um, hip hop public health. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. We have about 140 videos, and songs and comic books, all kinds of different media with healthy messages. So songs about um, drinking water, that's gonna be for Courtney. It's called the river of life. It reminds you to drink water. Um, and then there are songs about choosing, you know, um, healthy foods. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite videos is called You Are What You Eat. And it's kind of like a, it's a reggae sounding song and it talks about uh, vegetables and all the fun things that, that these artists like to choose as well. But also we have a whole bunch of hip hop dance videos called Hype Breaking It Down. Everyone could do this. Uh, you can do it sitting down, you could do it standing up. Anyone who's, who's watching today and listening can um, look at all of our resources. They're all free. Maybe some of these resources can help support some of the wellness activities that you're doing in your life. I watched the wash your hands video. Oh, right. And I love that you guys incorporated ASL into that. I think that's yeah. very important and it's very mm -hmm. inclusive for everybody. So I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, check it out and let us know what you like. For everyone that's on social, you could follow us on on all the platforms that are out there, H-H-P-H-O-R-G. With COVID-19, it's, it's created a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles. Both of you, I'm sure, have participated in teams and clubs, and now you're not able to, to meet in person or practice in person or, or play together. So how have you been able to stay connected with clubs or teams or, or even your friends? When we were playing basketball and it started, we went and did Zoom meetings with our team and that's how we interact with all of our team members. What did we do in those Zoom meetings? We sent letters, um, sometimes we exercised and we did a challenge for um, pit five to drink a water. Drink how many waters you can drink in a week. Yep, so we counted how much water <laughs> our entire basketball team drank in a week and we challenged some other schools to see who could beat each other and we did some exercising on Zooms. Um, I know for dance we did some drive-by things mm -hmm. um, where we what all- is, what, is, what does that mean? 
So for all the seniors at least, um, they had they had everyone in the studio come together in a car parade and come to each of the seniors' house and you know just check in. The owner of our studio brought us each little gifts and put a sign in our yard just to you know make us have a little something special because we got our senior year taken away. We've been doing Zoom trivia nights. Bingo. We've done bingo. We've just tried to come up with some creative ideas. I know the last thing anyone wants to do is sit in another Zoom meeting, but um, we've tried to make them pretty engaging and fun and give kids an opportunity to be on their computer for something unschool related. A new year is a great time to create some new goals and provides opportunities to refocus and reconnect. What are some wellness goals that you guys are hoping to focus on in this upcoming fresh new year? To get more active, like eat more food, um, healthy foods and drink more water. I would say one of the things that I'm gonna try to do more of is uh, on the activity side, I wanna do a little bit more like strength training, but not with weights, like just with my own body. Like I wanna try to do some more push-ups and planks and crunches. I wanna try to do, get a little stronger. You can catch up with me in a few months and ask me if I've done any of these. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I'm the same way. I've been saying that um, I wanna start actually working out, not just doing stretches or a walk. Mm -hmm. I want to actually start to work out and hold myself accountable for those things. Oh, well, maybe the three of us could be, you know, buddies. We could email awesome. each other and check in in a month or so and see how, see, we can keep each other accountable, see how things are going. That sounds great. And then the last thing with the bet all of us could take more of in this upcoming year is that we all need some more self-care, a little more time for ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Be nice to ourselves. Well, Lori, thank you so much for sharing with Ella and I today. Um, and thank you everyone for joining another episode of Inside Inclusion. See you next time.